Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on Primetime, one couple is under arrest. Crystal Paco has details to a stabbing over in Timuning. Plus, Carmen Terlahi is at the home of the Sharks where students are speaking out in Jigo to rebuild now. And we've got the question every GovGuam worker wants answered. Will Black Friday be a holiday? Happy everybody and good evening. I'm Jason Salas and these are tonight's top stories. Well, a couple has been placed under arrest in connection to a stabbing over in Timuning last night. And even more frightening about this story, the victims were not only children, but members of their immediate family. Crystal Paco has tonight's top story. She was only trying to defend her mother. Court documents stating Monday's stabbing incident along Mammoth Street in Timuning started as a physical altercation between a woman and her boyfriend. That couple placed under arrest last night. 33-year-old M.B. Koto faces charges of attempted murder, aggravated assault, assault, and family violence. 40-year-old Juliet Nace, meanwhile, faces charges of resisting arrest and disorderly conduct. According to court documents, 14-year-old J.M. was trying to keep Koto from attacking her mother, Nace. That's when she changed his target to the teen girl and allegedly punched her several times. Trying to come to the girl's rescue was her cousin, 11-year-old A.R. His attempt to punch Koto prompted the man to pull out a knife and stab the boy. He sustained a three-inch laceration to his neck. The adult couple then fled the scene. When police arrived, they were directed to Ritz's apartment. There they found two individuals who denied knowing the suspects in the case. A witness, however, confirmed their identities, yelling their names from the police car. When approached by police, Nace reportedly stated, quote, take me to jail, end quote, and made a scene yelling as police handcuffed her. Koto, who was patted down for weapons, was not carrying any at the time of his arrest. The 11-year-old was transported to the Guam Memorial Hospital for treatment. No word yet on his condition. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Bail's been set for Koto at $20,000. Nace, meanwhile, was released on a $1,000 performance bond. Well, let's go now to the ongoing battle to rebuild the home of the Sharks up in Jigo as students and staff spoke out today at Sanchez High, making yet another push to get construction at the campus going before the new year. Carmen Terlahi has our next report. Rebuild Simon Sanchez High School now. For years, we waited for something to be done about the school. Students, faculty, and staff are frustrated by how childish it is to dodge such a concern. Never make promises that you don't plan on keeping. Hacy San Jose is one of many students, like Michael Fernandez, who were promised a new school and are still waiting. You know, my sister came to the school in 2008, and then she was promised that her, the school would actually re be rebuilt. And then my cousin went to the school. They promised her that it would be rebuilt. Then my other cousin went to the school. They also promised her that it would be rebuilt. And then I finally came to the school, and still it's not yet rebuilt. Two weeks ago, Senator again introduced Bill 204. The bill would transfer full responsibility from the Department of Public Works to DOE. Chico Mayor Rudy Mantinani believes the current procurement process is the reason for the six-year delay. It would save all the schools have always said that the procurement process is the problem. And I told these kids that they should be proud that they're the ones that are taking the lead approving of this, this bill. Students of Simon Sanchez hope their voices will finally be heard and that Bill 204 is more than just another empty promise. We don't care who gets the money or the contract. We just want the school. And to the governor, please support us in our decision to support this bill in the rebuilding of Sanchez and do not put your politics ahead of our education. Education that for Andre Bainham, a teacher at Simon Sanchez, goes hand in hand with more building and less politics. It's one of two things. Either the Department of Public Works is incompetent, which I don't believe, or they're doing this on purpose, uh, which, that, uh, which I do believe. So we have to 
try and remove the politics from this equation, you've done nothing. You've done nothing to help education on the island of Guam. You've actually stifled education. So this is, this is who you need to answer to. A public hearing will be held on December 5th in hopes that island leaders will finally sign a contract by the end of the year. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. All right, Carmen, thanks much. Let's stay with Island Education Matters. It is now official as in an order issued this week, Chief Judge Francis Hideko Gatewood dismissed with prejudice the case against a pair of Guam Education Board members in their individual capacities. Rosie Taina Tango and Dr. Jose Cruz resolved their issues with DOE Superintendent John Fernandez. You might recall that Fernandez filed a $7 million lawsuit in federal court after the board terminated his contract. No action was taken for the remaining board members. Well, will one man make his comeback to GPD? Mark Charfitz will need to have his case settled in the courts before the CSC will entertain his termination appeal. The former police colonel appeared in court on Tuesday. There, he was advised there would be a slight delay to his trial in February. When asked if parties would reach a resolution instead of going to trial, defense attorney Randy Cunliffe said, quote, I doubt it. Trial is now set for the middle of February. It was almost a year ago the Charfrist was seen on police body cam footage yelling at junior officers responding to a report of fireworks at an agate home. He now faces three misdemeanor charges for official misconduct and obstructing government functions. Well, one man was not deported at all, and now he is in jail. Jingji Zhen appeared in federal court this week where he pleaded not guilty to alien failure to depart. In August, court documents state the man, who is Chinese, prevented or hampered his deportation from the United States. Trial set for late January. Well, it is a sure sign that we are in a time of giving. Governor Calvo today, as we reported on social media, declared November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving, which is Black Friday, a GovGuam holiday. That is correct. If you are a public sector worker, that means you will have a four-day weekend. Enjoy. Calvo encourages the community to use the holiday to spend time with their families, begin your holiday shopping, and to shop local. His advice. The declared holiday also falls in line with National Family Week. Please stay tuned, everybody. We are just getting started. Prime Time continues when we return right here on KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Calvo Select Care's medical provider network offers choice and access to quality facilities locally, nationally, and internationally. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. And to celebrate with a brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 8 at ITE. Hey, honey. Have you seen the fence? Because it's missing again. Really? That is so weird. Yeah, what do you think it could be? Uh, I don't know. Do you think you can keep an eye out? Yeah, I could probably find it. But how long will it take? It usually takes three or four hours to find a, a fence. Let's go. Okay, go Cardinals. We're good. Can't believe she bought it. Let's go. Hyundai, official sponsor of the NFL. When you know what you want and you want it great, look no further than Ruby Tuesday's new Steakhouse Sensations menu. Choose from a 20-ounce dry aged prime bone-in ribeye or an 8-ounce filet mignon tenderloin. Either steak seared to your preference and served with two specialty sides, like Denancy mashed potatoes, grilled asparagus, or roasted Brussels sprouts. Enjoy surf and turf and add a succulent lobster tail or tender grilled salmon filet to complete your meal. This plus a whole lot more, it's Steakhouse Sensations for a limited time and only at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. We've got more local headlines coming up. But first, a national piece as President Donald Trump is taking more steps to isolate North Korea and put pressure on the communist nation to end its nuclear weapons program. Nick Delgado reports. 
The commander-in-chief made it clear during a White House cabinet meeting on Monday, Trump designating North Korea a state sponsor of terror. Should have happened a long time ago. Should have happened years ago. North Korea has repeatedly launched ballistic missiles and has refused to end its nuclear weapons program in defiance of UN sanctions. Since August, Guam has been in the spotlight after North Korea made threats to launch missiles towards the territory. This after the back and forth between the country's Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un and President Trump. Homeland Security officials, however, have maintained there is no threat to the island, but the president is now announcing new penalties and accusing the communist nation of threatening the world with nuclear devastation. The North Korean regime must be lawful. It must end its unlawful nuclear and ballistic missile development and cease all support for international terrorism, which it is not doing. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson adds the administration is still hoping for diplomacy when dealing with North Korea, but that designating the country as a state sponsor of terrorism is part of the process to, quote, turn the pressure up. We've had other countries in our visit to Vietnam. They have uh, committed that they're going to curtail activities further uh, with North Korea. Malaysia has indicated their curtailment. Singapore has cut off all trade with North Korea. The Philippines have cut off all trade. And uh, just recently, the Deputy Secretary of State has been in Africa. He had meetings with the Sudanese government. Uh, the Sudanese government have traditionally been buying military weapons from North Korea. They now have agreed to halt all those purchases as well. So this is being it's taking effect all around the world. And we think as it takes effect, again, this just continues to tighten the pressure on the Kim regime, we're all with an intention to have him understand this is only going to get worse until you're ready to come and talk. The president's action puts North Korea back on the list of countries the U.S. views as state sponsors of terror for the first time since 2008. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Sinek Delgado. Officials broke ground today in local news on an affordable housing project, but officials say it's not your typical lower rent community. The development is designed with a better quality of life in mind. Nestor Locanta was there and files our next story. The ceremonial turning of sand marks the launch of the Villa del Mar in the village of Mongmong Totumaiti. It will consist of 50 units, 25 three bedrooms, and 25 four bedrooms, and will be rented to families with earnings less than 60% of the median income level. Governor Eddie Calvo praised the development for helping to further his goal to build 3,000 high quality affordable units for low income families. The Guamanian dream, I call it for owning or, or at least starting out with a place that they could call home. And uh, I think we're somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 units. So we got a year left. So you see why I've been cracking the whip? We're almost there. <laughs> this is the latest low-income housing tax credit project by Ironwood Guam Development, a pioneer here in the housing and urban development program, which is managed through GURA. Company president, Carlos Camacho. Guam is a service industry uh, community, from tourism to government. That's the level of families that we're taking care of. But here's the difference about Ironwood. We're looking for sustainability for quality of life. The Villa Del Mar will have a community center, sports facilities, a barbecue area, and Camacho was most proud of the after-school programs for the children living in the development. He says they will have access to such things as computer labs and homework tutoring that help make learning a priority. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. In other news, it's a bid to end the stalemate between Governor Calvo and Speaker B.J. Cruz over Adloop's hospital modernization plan. Health Committee Chairman Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. says instead of raising taxes, the public sector should end certain tax exemptions. He says that they could then pay for the hospital's budget shortfalls and the debt service on the governor's proposed $125 million improvement bond for the Guam Memorial Hospital. We're, we're looking at everything across the board, but specifically, you know, there are uh, wholesalers, there's banks, there's hotels. Uh, we know that there's also insurance industries that um, are exempted from um, from GRT or have a, some special accommodation in how they're able to um, calculate their what the taxes they pay on GRT, whether it be on net income versus gross income. He says an initial review of the industries and tax exemptions indicate the additional revenue should be enough to, quote, properly fund health care servicing on island. 
The governor has been pushing for public hearings on his bill to modernize GMH, with the speaker having blocked the hearings until Cavill agrees to a voter referendum on its proposed business privilege tax increase. Well, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, students from the University of Guam's Political Science Club and the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences are collecting toiletries to make care packages for patients of the skilled nursing unit in Barragata Heights. Natasha Suba, Luisa Tenorio, and Sierra Camacho gave back. It's good to give back. That's the thing. And us being political science majors, it's kind of a correlation between being out in the public. These are the patients that don't really have the family or don't have families or resources to collect these things and have the basic needs that or we're able to gather. So that's why we're donating to them. Basic essentials are being collected such as soap, shampoo and toothbrushes. Tomorrow's the last day to make a donation at the second floor of the UOG Humanities Building in Mingilao. Well, it is a family tradition that continues strong to this day, and now for the 16th year, Quality Distributors has marked the start of the holiday season with a large donation to the Salvation Army Guam Corps Food Bank. Today's donation totaled $30,000 worth of food. Quality Distributors Sales and Marketing Manager Edson Lai explains. Every year we've donated over $30,000 worth of food products, so I would say in the last 16 years with today's drop-off is over half a million dollars worth of food products. Today's donation included 5,000 cans of tulip luncheon meat and over 10,000 pounds of rice in addition to turkeys, ham, flour, bottled waters, and organic banana chips. Speaking of food, on Monday our friends over at Outback Steakhouse volunteered their time and food to feed the homeless at the Dedo Mayor's office. They grilled on site, feeding over 70 people who came out to enjoy some good old-fashioned barbecue Outback style. The company will be closed temporarily for a major remodel and renovations and is expected to reopen in early December. The renovation is part of their 20th anniversary activities, and while renovations are underway, the team has been taking their spirit of giving to the community by hosting several outreach events. Well, we've got some regional headlines for you now. Here are our friends up north at KSPN2 News in Saipan. Half a day, I'm Jackie Ray, and here's what's making news in the Marianas. Superior Court Judge Joseph Camacho found probable cause to charge 22-year-old Peter Fritz Lazama with sexual abuse of a minor in the second degree and providing alcohol to a minor. Police say Lazama sexually abused a 15-year-old girl who was reported missing by her mother on November 9th. The girl who said Lazama was her boyfriend did not return home on November 8th and was reported missing on November 9th. She was found the next day. Governor Ralph Torres invited friends, family, and members of the community to the Torres compound on Sunday to hear his big announcement. But first, he outlined the accomplishments of his administration, including those of the lieutenant governor. I also want to acknowledge that where we are today, we would not and could not have accomplished the progress we have done without him. What he says about joining Rhoda Tinian and, the, and Saipan has won, he made it a reality. And while the lieutenant governor will be campaigning for Rota Senate, he stood in support as Torres made his intentions known. I have decided to run for governor in 2018. Well over 400 people are out here today for the governor's announcement, and he says he does understand he's received some criticism during his term, but that doesn't change the progress. That we didn't just wake up one day and say all of a sudden there's good economy. No, there's a lot of criticism that came with it. People that got criticized, we got criticized for making actions. But God, what is this action done now, three years later? Now we got economy is growing better. People get uh, hired, new jobs. Uh, higher wages, land compensation, we can go on and on, retirement fund. I mean, where was that 15, 20 years ago? And as for his running mate... Not just your support, but more so your blessing. And I want to announce my running mate for Lieutenant Governor for 2018, our Senate President, no other than Arnold Indonesio Palacios. For more news, make sure you visit us at SaipanTV.com. Please stay tuned, there's more coming up.
Managing our wireless data used to drive my family crazy. But now that we've switched to GTA and get all that bonus data, we're spreading the love. You sure you don't mind the wait, honey? Take your time. I'm good. But we're missing the game. Nope. I've got bonus data from GTA. Come and watch. Love it. Get 10 extra gigs of wireless data on every line every month when you bundle. Visit GTA.net for more details. Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Off today, Mariana's Guavosi, Chris, KAM Sports, proudly brought to you by Triple J. Let's get right to it. Play ball! GW Geckos at home on the diamond, taking on the Guam High Panthers. Guam High with the defensive stop on the pop fly to left. Gecko has got it going in the second inning, getting a runner on after the single to left with one down. The Geckos getting the timing down on the Panthers pitcher. Slow reaction by the catcher, allowing the base runner to take second and move into scoring position for the home team. High throw at second, allows the runner to get on safely. Bad throw, bad throw. Gets by the catcher, ball goes over his head and moves the runner to third. GW scoring a run before the Panthers would get out of the inning. Geckos went on to take the game, a big 14-4, improving to 5-1 and one of the season. The loss dropping the Panthers to 4-4. Four and four. Isaiah Nauta with the magic stick for the Geckos, hitting two home runs and picking up five RBIs in the win. Great stop by the third baseman to prevent another run from scoring here. Championship game action, the second annual Micro Classic held at Paseo. Yup, Paseo finally back in use after some TLC put into the field grounds. Broken bat on the play after getting jammed on an inside fastball. The Guam national team taking on Palau. Hey, wow, Palau coming into the game with a 6-5 win over Guam in the playoffs the day before. It was a defensive battle through the first couple innings as both teams made some big plays on D. Guam leaving a runner stranded on third after Palau came up big on defense with a second baseman robbing the line drive ball. Hard shot goes right up the middle, gets snagged. Eric Cepeda went seven innings on the mound for Guam, recording six strikeouts. Cepeda, hey, bada, 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 swing, and a miss. Team Guam got their sticks going in the ninth, scoring eight runs. Wow. To close the deal for the 11-1 win, B.J. Balahadia finished the game with four hits. Balahadia gets on base after the bad throw to first. Palau pulls off the double play to get out of the inning. B.J. out at second, throw to first just in time as the first baseman stretches out for the ball and keeps his foot on the bag for the out. Double I, double AG girls high school basketball. The Sharks at home against the Islanders. JFK's Francine Valena crashing the boards. Gets position down low. Takes it up for two off the backboard. After a quick T.O. Sanchez setting up the inbound play. Keilani Estoy spot up in the corner. Drano deep ball to cut into JFK's lead. K.J. Camacho showing a range. Pass from Taisha Palma. Camacho with the three to Lanza all net. Sharks get the win at home. Keep on swimming, Sharks. Behind some late free throws, Angelique Sahagun getting it done here at the line for the home team. Bud King and Aloha made Prince of the Lanes Grand Finals race and Nicholas Crucial four-bagger from the 6th to ninth frames, earning him the Bud King of the Lanes title, 212-181 over 10 seed Zane Zamora and etching his name into the year-end Grand Finals. The Aloha made Prince of the Lanes title went to 6th seed Josiah Lanuza after 2nd seed Ia Salandanan was unable to convert in the extended frame, leaving three pins standing. All right, Marianas, thank you so much for watching. Guavasi, Chris, and Joss!
Nissan's fall clearance event is on with the best prices of the year. Save as much as $8,000 on the all-new A-Passenger Armada. Get the cargo van selected best in class with 25 miles per gallon combined. The fuel-efficient in the 200 compact cargo van with 5-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty starting at just $127 per pay period. Great deals on Versus Sedan, Frontier King Cab, or the 7-passenger Pathfinder starting at just $87 per pay period during the fall clearance event at Nissan Upper Tumon. Find out more at NissanGuam.com. Say hello to the widest 4G LTE network in the Marianas, Guam, Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. When your passion goes beyond your island, choose a plan that takes you further. With Docomo Pacific's My Plans, you can do a lot throughout the Marianas. 20 gigs for $79 or 30 gigs for $99. All the data you need to connect, share, and make all your ideas happen. Dream big. Reach higher with My Plans. Docomo Pacific. Better together. All 2017 models must go during Triple J Auto Group's Big Deal 2017 Inventory Blowout. We're making room for our 2018 models. That's right, all-out blowout sale. Thousands off on all 2017 Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, Volvos, and Kias. Now is the time to check out the largest selection of brands on Guam. See PD and Post ads for details. Every customer receives a free gift. Stop by today or visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Triple J, 33 years of putting customers first. We have an extra special edition of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club tonight. Here are tonight's recipients. Half a day to Siania Taimunglo. Happy birthday. Wishing you many more years to come. We love you, says your family. Kavan Tahaji. Happy birthday to you from your friends. Also, happy birthday to Vicky Gumaban Luhan in Fort Hood, Texas. Happy birthday number 26. We love and miss you from your family. Makoa Kahele, happy ninth birthday from your entire family, especially your little sister Alana and baby brother Kainoa. We love you to infinity and beyond. And a very special happy birthday to KOM's own Mike Villagomez. This comes from Michael Paul, Sharon, and Jason. All right, happy birthday, Mike, once again, and all the birthday recipients. Mike Villagomez, that is a lot of birthday candles to blow up. All right, stay tuned. There's more coming up. Closed captioning is brought to you by it and &E Life in Motion. Health, Home, and Lifestyle. Presented by Paradise Fitness Center. Changing lives since 1996. Welcome to the show where we get you in a healthy state of mind and a healthy and fit body. Nurse Jen Artero is up first with a health tip. Health Check with Nurse Jen is presented by Island Cancer Center. Hafiday, I'm Nurse Jen. Butterflies in your stomach before going on a blind date, knots in your belly before a public speaking event, pounding heart when the boss calls you into his office. Many people suffer from it. It's the feeling of anxiety. Approximately 29% of adults in the U.S. have been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Common anxiety disorders include panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, social anxiety disorder, phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Research has proven that if an individual is diagnosed with one type of anxiety disorder, they have a higher risk for other types of anxiety disorders and related problems. Anxiety is often described as tension, excitement, stress, nerves, and phobia. And anxiety is a diagnosable medical condition that can affect any of us at any time in our lives. More true if anxiety is the result of paranoia and interferes with one's health, wellness, and life. Medications such as Xanax, Glonapine, Valium, Ativan, and Cirex can be prescribed, especially if the anxiety disorder is so severe that it prevents one from leaving the house, getting a job, socializing, engaging in a relationship, or being hygienic. Now it's time to make an appointment with one's local health care provider to seek advanced professional help. However, sometimes anxiety is good. I've seen anxiety motivate a student to study more, study harder, and get better grades. Anxiety signals the mind 